Welcome everybody. My PhD is about the uh, non-pharmacological and pharmacological treatments of heart failure. I am Richard Massey. I'm a resident at the uh, Samuels University Heart and Vascular Center uh, and a PhD student. My uh, vision is to discover every single detail that can influence the outcome of the disease. And my mission is to find more personalized treatment for heart failure patients. So I have two ongoing projects uh, at TMP. One is about uh, the uh, device therapy, and the other one is about uh, acute heart failure. So my first uh, project is uh, the predictive value of scar burden assessed by cardiac MRI on sudden cardiac death in cardiac resynchronization therapy patients with the methodology of systematic review and meta-analysis. So as for the background, is it a huge problem that the five-year mortality rate of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction can reach 50% out of, out of which 10 to 20% die suddenly? What we know is that the scar burden is believed to be a major cause of sudden cardiac death and the cardiac MRI is the most accurate diagnostic tool for assessing scar burden. ICD is the gold standard treatment for sudden cardiac death. It's very important to choose an optimal device for these patients, ICD, CRTP, or CRTD, uh, to save more lives. The missing link is that there's no clear evidence in the guidelines regarding the optimal device choice. I would like to briefly tell the main differences about the three different devices. ICD is only for defibrillation, while the CRTs are uh, for rest synchronization. It uh, tries to improve ejection fraction and uh, to uh, diminish the clinical uh, appearance of heart failure. Uh, CRT D, D stands for defibrillation, so it has both function. Uh, the uh, target populations are uh, different and it's also very important to take into consideration uh, the complication rates and the costs as well. So not everybody will uh, benefit from a CRTD, which uh, is uh, a combination of the two uh, devices. So our aim is to optimize the device choice based on scar burden assessed by cardiac MRI. Our clinical question is that what is the association between the degree of scar burden assessed by cardiac MRI and sudden cardiac death in CRT patients? Our population is heart failure patients undergoing CRT, and our prognostic factor is scar burden assessed by MRI. Our outcome is sudden cardiac death. We also would like to uh, see the complication rates as an outcome. Our hypothesis is that the higher the scar burden, the more effective is CRTD in reducing sudden cardiac death. Our clinical implication could be that the optimal device choice would uh, decrease mortality and morbidity and also lower the costs and the complication rates. Uh, here you can see my uh, systematic search with my search key. And uh, finally, we found uh, 18 uh, full eligible uh, texts. Uh, and now we are at the data extraction. But uh, we weren't lazy because we already uh, submitted an abstract to ERA Cardiology Congress. Uh, hope they will accept it. And here you can see the baseline clinical characteristics and my uh, data table with all the 18 articles. We already made a forest plot uh, out of our uh, research where uh, our endpoint was appropriate ICD shock and uh, the uh, two uh, main population was scar burden positive and scar burden negative uh, patients. Uh, you can see that altogether uh, uh, there were uh, almost 70% higher risk of uh, getting appropriate ICD shock when the scar burden was positive, but uh, you also can see that the heterogeneity was quite high, so it's of course a limitation of our study. For my second project, uh, we are investigating the diuretic effects of novel drugs compared to conventional ones in acute heart failure. Uh, it's also a huge problem that acute heart failure has a pure prognosis, 
and the rehospitalization rate can uh, reach 30% in 60 to 20 days. Uh, and we also know that loop diuretics are worsening kidney function on long time and uh, that can cause a high long-term mortality. But we have some new alternatives without that so severe side effects. These alternatives could be SGLT2 inhibitors and acetazolamide that would li we like to compare to standard care of IV and perosfurosamide. So our aim is to evaluate the evidence of new type of drugs compared to standard care in acute heart failure. Here you can uh, see uh, uh, my PICO. Uh, our clinical question is that our SGLT2 inhibitors and acetazolamide are effective as diuretics in acute heart failure. We are looking for patients with acute heart failure. Our intervention is SGLT2 therapy and IV acetazolamide compared to PEROS and IV furosamide. We are uh, investigating a short and a long-term outcome with uh, EGFR, serum creatinine, electrolyte level, uh, and body weight changes. And uh, for long-term outcome, the length of hospital stay, readmission, uh, in-hospital mortality, and the one-year mortality rate. Our hypothesis that uh, the alternative diuretics are non-inferior on short-term outcomes, and they could be superior for the long-term outcomes. Uh, we would like to uh, see if we can replace Rusamid in clinical practice uh, while uh, decreasing adverse events on the long-term. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for uh, this very nice lecture. My question would be regarding the second topic. Uh, you are checking SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, which are quite well known in critically ill patients, uh, to increase the rate of infection and uh, uh, the rate of ketoacidosis as well. Uh, would you like to check these uh, side effects as well in the outcomes? Um, well, uh, we weren't uh, thinking about to check, but it's a very good idea to look for. Uh, we, while we were uh, checking the preliminary research, uh, they uh, mentioned uh, these uh, problems indeed. Uh, but, uh, so we definitely would take into consideration. Our main uh, objective is to see the uh, diuretic effects of uh, these uh, drugs. So we are rather focusing on the short-term outcomes how uh, usable are these uh, drugs, but uh, from now we will definitely see it. Thank you. Can, can we go you to your forest plot? Yes. Since I think, I think that could be important for, for the others too, because I mean, most of the studies are not that well advanced, so actually we see the first forest plot today. So this is interesting that some study, in some studies that the I mean, within the, even within the study, I mean, the deviation is very small, while in others, I mean, that's very, very wide. So do you have any clue for this? Since you already looked at all of this, so mm -hmm. is this the quality of the studies or what? Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, as, as you can see that LIVO uh, and the colleagues uh, had quite uh, different uh, hazard ratios and, than the others. Uh, maybe this uh, could be that uh, baseline uh, clinical uh, characteristics of these uh, patients uh, were a little bit uh, different. I didn't uh, uh, show up uh, what were the, the age of the populations and uh, the other uh, because uh, it, it were quite different. And the other thing is that uh, uh, this uh, study had a very, very high number of patients, more than uh, 7,000, while the other uh, articles are, uh, were investigating patient population from uh, 50 to 100 patients. So. Uh, as, as, as uh, we just can see that the, due to maybe this, the heterogeneity was quite high, and this is just a limitation, just you, you mentioned. 
Well, it was very nice, Richie, and uh, I'm I'm uh, curious. Uh, why did you choose uh, Atset as Alamid in your second project? Uh, did you have any uh, uh, during the preliminary research any advances of that old and very huge side effects burden drug? Uh, yeah, indeed. Uh, uh in, uh, in cardiology, uh, we just have a brand new uh, clinical trial called the Adaver uh, trial, which is uh, just published uh, the data uh, in this year, and uh, they seem to be very promising in acute heart failure for its direct uh, effects in a well-selected patient population. So uh, we would like to uh, see uh, if there is anything uh, uh, any other, any, any else uh, studies.